Hello designers, my name is Karthik from Design School for WordPress Beginners, the place where I teach you how to design, build and customize your websites. If you are new here, consider subscribing. I had already explained what Gutenberg is and how it's useful. It's basically a block based editor available within your posts or pages or custom post types that will allow you to design better looking websites by using a kind of visual interface. Well that's the intro. You can check out the Gutenberg playlist on the channel for more information. In this video, I'll discuss 10 key aspects in which Gutenberg is different from page builders such as Elementor, Beaver Builder, DV and so on. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we dive into the video, I just want to tell you that Gutenberg is a pseudo page builder in its current form. What does that mean? Well, it's trying to be a page builder, but not really the way page builders are. Let me show that with an example. So actually Gutenberg is heavily dependent on your theme for styling, for preview, for fonts, for colors and all that. Of course, your theme or your page builders can actually override those options with their own options or you can work independently. And when you switch themes, the content that you create with page builders is unaffected. On the other hand, the content that you change will be affected when you switch themes. So for instance, if you go to appearance, if you go to customize and if we change various settings such as font colors, font size or anything, those are actually inherited by your Gutenberg editor. So once my customize interface loads, so let me just change text color here. So let me just make it purple. And you can clearly see that the text on this page is unaffected because this is a page designed with page builder. So I'll just pick this. I'll just click on publish. The text here is unaffected. Let me refresh the post that I have composed with Gutenberg. So I'll just hit refresh. You can now see that the font or the text color is purple because that's the preference I set in this customizer area of my theme. So when I switch theme, it again inherits the properties or the settings that are set under customizer of that particular theme, which means that Gutenberg actually relies on your theme. In fact, Gutenberg works with your theme and enhances your theme rather than being an replacement to your theme. On the other hand, page builders are independent of your theme. Anyway, let's discuss this in this video. Coming in at number one, Gutenberg is actually dependent on your theme. So when you switch themes, all the settings will be gone and whatever settings you have for your recent theme will be inherited by Gutenberg block editor. So your websites will look different even though you've edited or made them with Gutenberg block editor when you switch themes. On the other hand, page builders are totally independent of your theme. They can override each and every style and each block has their own unique style that you can override and this is just not possible with Gutenberg. So your Gutenberg editor is again a pseudo page builder. While page builders try to avoid theme dependency, Gutenberg actually does the opposite. It actually relies on your theme and in fact your theme should support these wide width, full width elements and few other options and few other enhancements to the widgets that or blocks that Gutenberg provides. The second big difference here is live preview. Well, Gutenberg tries its best to give you what it might look like on the front end. It's not an exact preview. On the other hand, page builders show you WYSIWYG preview, which means that what you see is what you get. So if you drag this element from here to here, that's what it's going to look like. And this is how your element would look like when you actually publish the page. On the other hand, it's not the same with Gutenberg. In fact, I have a post composed with Gutenberg and I can see that my page looks full stretched out on all full width. And let's go and preview this particular post. As you can see here, this is actually the live preview from the front end. And it's not shown on Gutenberg interface because my Gutenberg interface is just showing the preview of the content but not the whole page. So it won't show my header. It won't show my sidebar, it won't show my footer 
or any other elements other than the content designed with Gutenberg. In fact, I won't even see this leave a comment and categorized and author settings in my Gutenberg because it's my theme that's controlling this. So again, Gutenberg is heavily reliant on your theme. So the preview is actually a preview supported by your theme. So Gutenberg is just trying to depict what it's going to look like and it's not a live preview. Your sidebar won't be there, your header won't be there, your footer won't be there. But with page builders, you can have a live preview. You can have your header, you can have your footer, you can have everything and then design your page and you're actually designing it live and you're not trying to guess it, how it's going to look. So that's the major difference between Gutenberg and page builders. Coming in at number three is responsive design. Well, Gutenberg lets you add blocks from third parties or design various elements. But the problem with it is that it won't show you the preview or how it would look on mobile or tablet devices. Well, this is a big problem. If I don't know how my website or web page would look on mobile or tablet devices, I don't know what I'm designing, right? On the other hand, page builders such as Elementor clearly give you the preview for tablet devices. So I can simply switch to tablet mode and see how my website or design would look like on tablet devices and then even make specific changes. So I can have a specific margin value, padding value or change various other elements and make my design look great on tablet devices and then I can go to mobile and then I can do the same with mobile devices. On the other hand, Gutenberg won't allow you to do that. It's just a replacement to your classic editor. So it's your theme, again, responsible for handling the responsive nature of these blocks. If your theme or the block that you added doesn't support responsive design, well, you're out of luck. So this is a major problem. I think they'll address this in future versions of Gutenberg. But again, this is where page builders come on top of Gutenberg with responsive design. So page builders will allow you to design per device. And if you add custom CSS breakpoints, you can do even a lot more with the page builders. So check out the custom breakpoints tutorial on the channel. So that will allow you to design your website for more devices than the three breakpoints that your page builders define. Anyway, that's number three. Coming in at number four is theme builder. What exactly is a theme builder? Well, with page builders, you can design any aspect of your theme. So you can design a header, a footer, 404 page, archives page, and a lot more. And of course, this is available with the premium versions of most page builders. So for instance, I can pick header from here, I can design a header template, and then make it appear on various pages or specific pages that I need. You can also do the same with footer. I can also design the page layout, post layout, or I can even design third party custom post types, or I can design a lot more. So I can design tags page, I can design categories page, I can design 404 page, search results page, and a lot more. And best of all, these designs will be independent of your theme. So they'll actually override what your theme defines. So even if you switch your theme, these designs will be applied across your website and they won't change if you do that with page builder. Gutenberg is in phase one and it can just edit pages and posts and the theme builder functionality is not yet implemented into Gutenberg. And I'm really skeptical about it because without live preview, I don't see how you can design archive pages, search result pages, header footer. Anyway, we'll just wait and see. But the theme builder, which allows you to design various aspects of your website is already available with various page builders. And again, it's not there with Gutenberg as of now. Coming in at number five is reusable blocks or templates. Well, this is a feature heavily borrowed from page builders. Page builders allow you to import templates from other websites or page builders already have particular set of templates made by first party. For instance, this is an Elementor page and you can choose from any of the pre-built templates designed by the Elementor team. So you don't have to design everything from scratch. You can just use templates to get started. Gutenberg also has a similar feature. You can save any block as a reusable block, give it a name, 
So I'll just call it first reusable block and then you can save it and this block will be available within the reusable block section most used section or within the reusable block section so you can pick from here and if you change it anywhere on the page all the instances will get updated so this is kind of like the global widget in Elementor on the other hand page builders allow you to even save the whole pages as templates a section as a template or a global widget and a lot more page builders also allow you to embed templates using short code or the widgets supplied by page builders this is not a feature available with Gutenberg it just allows you to save any particular block as a reusable block and then you just need to use it or import it of course you can go here and click on manage all reusable blocks you can also import blocks from your other websites that you've designed so you can import in JSON format that you've designed from other websites so that's a handy feature however it's kind of limited to what page builders already provide so again Gutenberg is a pseudo page builder even in this aspect so it's trying to give that functionality but not providing that completely <laughs> that's kind of weird so coming in at number six are granular controls well Gutenberg lets me design my website based on blocks but if I want to add margin to this block or add padding within this block it's not possible why isn't that not possible? I don't know for some reason they didn't allow this to do. On the other hand, page builders give you granular control. So you can tweak the margin of a section, a column or individual widget. So you can just go back to the section. You can tweak the margin values, padding values, Z index and a lot more properties that you can do with CSS. This is again missing in Gutenberg. It will just allow you to specify a width and it won't allow you to add margin or padding to the blocks that you add and you need CSS for this. It's kind of weird that they didn't add this functionality or granular controls. Of course you can add a CSS class and then target it using CSS but the goal of Gutenberg is to make things easier not to complicate it. So granular controls are again missing in Gutenberg and you should rely on your theme or you have to write custom CSS code to do this. Okay, those are some drawbacks of Gutenberg. Now let's discuss where Gutenberg really shines. Coming in at number seven is ease of use. It's really easy to start designing or write content in Gutenberg and publish it than actually design a page in page builders. You need to know how to design the page on various devices. You need to tweak values. You need to give various headings various CSS properties and all that but on Gutenberg it's simple just give it a title hit enter then you go to next block then choose the type of block by default if you want to enter text simply enter the text that will be a text block and then hit enter again and if you want an image just click here upload or choose the image from your library and just like that you're writing and composing your post and content without any problem so Gutenberg is really easy to use and in fact at its core it's still an editor so it'll allow you to add content quite easily so after finishing composing your content and arranging blocks you can simply hit publish and just click on publish just like that your page or post will be live on the other hand you need to tweak various values with page builders and then you need to make sure that all the values play well together and make sure that the page actually looks good and once you do that you need to publish that Gutenberg just avoids this with a simple and easy to use interface so Gutenberg really shines with ease of use coming in at number eight is support for third-party add-ons or plugins this is a no-brainer Gutenberg is the core experience of every WordPress website so naturally it will attract developers attention and even theme developers want to harness the power of Gutenberg and they'll define few blocks for Gutenberg. Third party plugins will define few blocks for Gutenberg. All the existing plugins will define blocks for Gutenberg. This is a no match. Page builders are custom standards and yeah, they have neat little add-ons such as essential add-ons or various other plugins. 
but it's no match to wordpress for instance ultimate add-ons for gutenberg is an add-on block that has various things that you can do within your gutenberg experience so naturally all the developers will start defining blocks for gutenberg and there'll be a lot of things that you can do with gutenberg and given that they'll give their own custom layouts and various settings these will be really powerful and third party add on support for page builders is kind of limited of course they use the apis defined by these third party plugins but we are talking about wordpress versus custom standard so gutenberg is going to crush page builders in this area so third party support for gutenberg will start to kick off it already has and there are also few themes built with gutenberg and embracing gutenberg so within no time third party add-ons will be really powerful for gutenberg and the possibilities are really endless so all your short codes all your widgets all things wordpress will turn into blocks eventually as gutenberg starts taking off coming in at number 9 is cross compatibility well gutenberg is the way to enter content using the backend you may define a paste page layout or post layout using the theme builder of various page builders such as elementor but eventually this gutenberg is the way you add content to it so how does it work so you need to add the default blocks from the gutenberg interface you can click update and once the content is added and updated you can click on edit with elementor or edit with any page builder that you want to edit this particular gutenberg post and what it effectively does is that it takes all these blocks and puts it into a classic block plugin so it will treat your content like it did with the old classic editor so i just clicked update or edit with elementor you can see that everything that i added using the gutenberg editor will be wrapped into a classic text editor block so even the third party block will be wrapped into this and now i can edit it with elementor or add any widgets that i want to so i can drag in maybe button above this just like that i can place anything else and i can simply edit it with elementor but you shouldn't be doing this too often you can't go back again after editing with elementor as gutenberg is a pseudo page builder there will be conflicts so just make sure that if you want to edit a page or post with any page builder first compose or design it with gutenberg and then go edit it with that particular page builder of your choice don't do that again and again that may cause a lot of conflicts not with the first party blocks but with the third party blocks the because the third party blocks don't know what this type of content is so again it is cross compatible and it's a way to enter content from back end that's point number 9 finally possibilities well the possibilities with page builders are unlimited as you can do a lot more you can add conditions you can add preview you can design per device you can add lot of widgets lot of short codes and lot of features get added to page builder well the same is true for gutenberg as well as of now there are very few blocks or plugins for gutenberg but as gutenberg really takes off or people start embracing gutenberg there will be lot and lot of interesting updates that you might see with gutenberg for ex for instance you can take this yoast structured data block which will allow you to add how to article and it's totally optimized for seo this was not possible before and now it's possible with gutenberg so gutenberg opens up a lot of new possibilities and you can have an elementor template embedded within the gutenberg interface so a lot of possibilities with gutenberg here and it's going to be the standard like it or not it's here to stay we'll talk a lot more about gutenberg on this channel If you like this video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you didn't already and I'll talk to you in the next video peace 
and that's it for now and hope you guys like this video if you did make sure to give a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and if you need anything else don't hesitate to ask i'm ready to help you catch you in the next video peace